Welcome to Kogito Design, the YouTube channel that takes a deep dive into the world of tabletop game creation. What is the most influential board game of the 21st century? Is it this? Maybe. Or this? Possibly. What about this? I certainly hope not. I don't think the answer is any of these. The most influential and important game of this millennium is the classic 2008 game Dominion, the progenitor of the entire deck building genre. Deck building itself is arguably the most successful innovation in modern board gaming. Despite only being created 13 years ago, there are now over 4,000 published board games which claim this mechanic. And what's more, with innovative creations like Slay the Spire, this mechanic has now even spread to the medium of video games. So what is deck building and why is it so popular? In this video, we give a brief overview of a mechanic which seems to be almost universally adored. So what is deck building? Well, this is a difficult question to answer because like many successful mechanics, it is versatile. Game designers have found countless new ways to innovate and adapt the mechanism to suit their emerging needs. The simplest solution, therefore, is to go to the beginning of it all, to the classic game Dominion. In 2008, designer Donald X. Vassarino created a game which would change board gaming. Although he says it was not a direct inspiration, the collectible card game Magic the Gathering is what it was initially compared to. In Magic the Gathering, players competed using their own personalised deck built from the cards they had bought and traded with other players. Indeed, for many players, the building or drafting of the deck between games was the most enjoyable part of the game. Dominion was able to make the deck building process the essence of the game itself. And understanding the basic essence of Dominion is the perfect way to understand the mechanic of deck building. In Dominion, each player starts the game with a rather unimpressive hand of cards, and in the centre of the table sits a vast smorgasbord of possibilities. Decks of cards to add to and improve your own deck. These cards do all kinds of things, from gaining you victory points to win the game, to getting you money to buy yet more powerful cards. During your turn, you draw five cards from your deck, use some of them, and then discard all these cards into a personal discard deck. And any cards you acquire during your turn also go into this deck. When your draw deck is depleted, you shuffle this discard deck and it becomes your new draw deck. Simple. This simple cyclical mechanic has become so popular that it is now the go-to mechanism for publishers who have acquired expensive intellectual property to work with. Whether their game is based on the Marvel or Harry Potter universe, developers know that adding deck building into their games is a surefire path to popularity and sales. In fact, it has been used so often now, it is now easy and quick for experienced players to learn new games. And this benefit will only increase the more it is used, and it is very likely another key part of the reason we see it so much. Since this game was released, deck building has exploded and game designers have adopted and adapted the mechanic in a variety of interesting ways. To give some examples, games like Ascension and Star Realms quickly boiled down the essence of Dominion into a fast-paced card game with a constantly flowing trade row of cards to choose from. Bigger games like Clank adopted the mechanic as the engine for moving characters through a dragon-infested dungeon. Some games have even gone far enough to remove the cards entirely. Hyperborea and Orleon, for example, have you build a cloth bag of cardboard or wooden tokens. And Quarriers allows you to build a bag of dice that you draw, then roll on your turn, giving a doubled level of randomness. In many games, such as the solo game Friday, the cards have multiple uses, allowing players even more choices within their decks. In our game, Philosophy of Floating World, we took this mechanic and added an I cut you choose element to the draw phase, allowing for more player interaction than you would normally get from this stage of a deck building game. So why is this mechanic so successful? Deck building appeals to us on several deep psychological levels. Firstly, it gives games a naturally satisfying narrative curve. You start games with very few cards and limited options, then, slowly as you build up your deck during the game, 
you end up with a powerful pile of cards capable of doing very impressive things. This engine you have built is likely unique to you, given the individual deck you have created from your choices of which cards to collect and discard throughout the game. Secondly, the act of purchasing and collecting new things is a fundamentally positive one. Tabletop games are tactile things, and so the act of getting a new card or token and physically adding it to your deck or pool feels great. And this happens repeatedly in deck building games. Finally, the mechanic has a whole heap of interesting decisions embedded within it. Which cards to buy, which to keep, and which to discard. Deck builders generally have an intense replayability about them. The cards you take and discard carve out a unique path through your game and, at the end of it all, you are keen to go again to carve out a new path. So is deck building a panacea for game designers? Or does it have its own set of problems and pitfalls for us to be aware of? Well, firstly, the sheer amount of influence it has achieved is something to be wary of. The mechanic has been used and reused so many times now, it can feel a bit repetitive. More than a decade has passed since Dominion, and there are so many games similar to it that developers need to do more than simply clone these games to garner success. There needs to be some form of added innovation or a new and interesting combination of features. A second problem in many games is for those that have a need for instant gratification. The classic deck builder lets you buy these exciting new cards, which is great, but then they almost inevitably end up in your discard pile and you have to wait patiently to use your new acquisition. This is not necessarily bad, as it is very satisfying when they do eventually turn up, but some players want to play with their new shiny purchase straight away, and this is something I see when I teach non-gamers a new deck building game. New players will often try to use the cards they buy immediately, and feel a little deflated when they realise they have to put them into their discard pile. That being said, there are methods to mitigate this issue. In baseball highlights, for example, new players you purchase go straight to the top of the discard deck, so you can use them immediately in the next turn. In conclusion, deck building has been an unbelievably successful innovation in the field of tabletop games, and there is no doubt we'll be seeing even more interesting innovations and adaptations to come. And that is very, very good news. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video. And thanks so much to our patrons and those of you who are subscribed to our YouTube channel. It's very much appreciated. If you are liking our content so far, please head to Patreon to find out what we offer. Bye.